Right, here's hoping that defending the Hardcore Championship is a bit more interesting to go through than just gaining it in the first place. Though considering how many solid to even great wrestlers over the years never got any belt at all, now I feel like a bit of an ass. Yeah, Mankind's the only one that's got the belt, not the other version of Mick Foley. Please tell me we're not going to have another mirror match thing at some point in this line. And we're immediately defending it against the guy we won it from in the middle of the previous uh, run. I suppose that's as good a starting point as any, but still, no build up for this? I know the women's belt didn't really build uh, much of anything for its story moments either, but still. It felt like one thing led to another. Here, it feels like things just happened. It's, cooking. it's funny how I would have been a lot more intimidated if this was Taz coming to challenge us. But then he's the only one who's managed to beat us in one-on-one -on -one in this game so far. When we lost for the light heavyweight title, it was due to outside interference, and then we got double teamed again after apparently a pair of meaningless backstage brawls. Okay, definitely not a promising start for our defense of the belt in this one. I know I keep saying it, but I keep still somehow expecting to perform better in this game, considering I should know the mechanics pretty well after all these years, even if I haven't done this specific game day after day for all of those years. Eh, it's one of those things that's supposed to be easy to learn and hard to master. So why is it that even just against the AI in this game, I can feel like an idiot things can flow either way. At the very least, going through these wrestling games is reminding me why I never really tried to get into competitive fighting games outside of maybe close friends and family or against the AI. It's generally easier for me to get an idea on how to position troops or myself on a battlefield than just getting into a one-on-one -on -one brawl, even if I kind of like the simplicity of one-on-one -on -one battles compared to larger-scale conflicts. Eh. It's also, of course, easier to have an in-universe reason to fight some of the same people over and over again in a setting like the World Wrestling Federation than the sort of crap we tended to see in the Samurai Warriors games. But again, I should be more focused on the game we're doing right now, not talking about other things at the moment. Especially since Crash has a very genuine chance to win, despite the fact that I didn't feel it was all that troublesome to take the belt from him in the first place. We are literally fighting the exact same guy for the exact same belt. Why does it feel like I'm having more trouble against him now, when I'm pretty sure nothing should have changed? Am I just not as on the ball for this recording session for some reason? It's not like I can really tell based on how our character sprite is At least it feels like I'm starting to get some momentum behind me now. Now, if only I had a sense how much longer that momentum has to hold for us to get the win here. Not sure what button prompts made me do the insecurity there. I'm not even sure Mick Foley can, could ever pull off a kick like that. Or maybe I'm not giving the younger him enough credit. Not sure how moving his hands to grip that particular thigh helps, but then it's not like I've ever personally given someone a pile driver. Maybe it helps prevent the guy from uh, getting hurt somehow? Again, 
I have no clue why the AI is so focused on taking the fight back to the ring when the rules of the match are explicitly falls and submissions count anywhere. I suppose it would have been troublesome to change the code up for different match types, and hardcore matches are the only kind that run into this mire of lines, but still, I can't help feeling annoyed by it. Just like I can't help getting annoyed at the sheer frequency of rope breaks in the non-hardcore matches. Or that I just can't tell how damaged anyone ever really is in a given match. What can I say? This game has given me a number of pet peeves specific to it. Things that I was annoyed by in the other N64 wrestling games, but somehow feel more exacerbated here. at this point that we've got this match in hand, though considering many of our matches were determined in under three minutes, maybe it's not too early to call it. Place your bets! Will the Mandible Claw secure another win, or will a more generic submission get the job done? Hurry, Crash, we still have time to give you a second one. And again, I was just not a fan of Mr. Sokka, even though I could understand the appeal as they tried to make mankind less of an unhinged monster and more of a silly attraction. I was just more interested in the unhinged monster. Anyway, there goes the first part of our title defense run here. because this game has not convinced me that weapons are really worth much of anything, not because of any sense of honor. This is literally the only title where that sort of thing would be encouraged anyway. Yeah. This feels about as ridiculous as someone praising a TV show for not doing anything sexually titillating, and then challenging them to continue not doing so. And I'm assuming we would have gotten part one of weapons if we actually used weapons in the previous match for some reason. I suppose that's one justification for branching off the story, but it's not making trying to be a completionist for this game any more tempting. And I can't help finding it funny that during the Attitude Era, Kurt Angle was treated almost the same as the right to censor state. Just that his thing didn't disappear out of the blue because the writer stopped having to worry about some people writing letters saying they wanted things to be removed from the show because it wasn't kid-friendly or something like that. I'm pretty sure that if Kurt Angle had shown up earlier or later, that his uh, all-American athlete thing would have been treated far more like a heroic trait. Seriously, Vince seems to love the whole America versus the rest of the world thing. Occasionally booking someone to be pro-America and expecting people to cheer for them just because of that, even if it's not a continuing gimmick. In the 80s, that certainly worked for the likes of Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Hulk Hogan. But it's like the WWE never fully understood that when the world became more cynical, that being a pro-America gimmick sort of thing just doesn't catch fire like it did in the old days. Eh.
Well, this most certainly feels like a much easier match for us than the one against Crash Holly. I really wish I knew why, it just feels pretty damn difficult for me to figure out how to judge how tough a given fight is gonna be around here. Sure, we're fighting more than one person at a time, it's easy to say things are gonna be rough regardless of if it's a handicap match or a tag match. But I had no idea Taz was gonna steamroll us in the previous clip. Just like I had no idea we were gonna steamroll over Kurt here, just after dealing with uh, a slightly more difficult Crash Holly. I'm not even sure if it's a matter of me not really understanding the coding of this game at a fundamental level or not. It just feels too damn unpredictable. Now, when I'm not recording this game for the sake of an LP, that unpredictability for me is actually part of what helps keep me coming back to it. But when I'm recording the footage and then later commenting on it, that unpredictability is getting on my nerves. I had no idea if he was gonna tap or not to that submission move until it was finished. I have no idea how much of a chance for a comeback Angle has in this match. All I know is that he's been taking an indeterminate beating and just keeps getting back up regardless. Just tap already! You had no build up to this match, and you're certainly not putting up as much of a fight as the previous gal. It said danger while he was in the hold, and he still didn't submit, despite the sheer amount of abuse his head and neck have gone through so far. Again, we are eight clips into this game. And it is not the first game that has had these mechanics. I shouldn't have this much trouble figuring out when things are going to end around here. Oh, well, at least the Mandible Claw has managed to finish two matches here so far. You've got to be kidding me. You mean to tell me that we're going to have to go through the same crap in the defend the belt thing that we did when we were first earning it? Sure, it was executed slightly differently, but still, this is about as lazy as it gets, story-wise. As if the fact that we're now getting a third match against Crash Holly isn't bad enough. Excuse me for hitting the fast-forward button. Well, I wasn't expecting a lot of thought to be put into this belt line. I was expecting more than this, and I was hoping we wouldn't have to go through three matches against the exact same guy. Ugh, good god. Please tell me they aren't gonna have us pay the APA for protection again. I'm sure getting suplexed into the entrance ramp is supposed to be more painful than getting it in the ring. But I somehow doubt this game is going to make that kind of distinction. Landing on one surface is probably going to do just as much damage as landing on another. But then it's not like we have any way to measure that sort of thing, do we? Definitely appreciate just how much room we have to fight on the entrance ramp, even if we rarely get the chance to fight here. I damn well know that most, if not all, of the SmackDown vs. Raw games didn't bother getting you to fight on such a large amount of space outside of the ring itself, even in matches where you don't have to worry about a countout. Sure, when you uh, actually live 
when you're no, not late, but when you're live at a wrestling event, yeah, my brain is shutting down. Yeah, you want as much to be in the ring as possible because that is literally set to stage. But excuse me for thinking that a video game should have more freedom than that. Then I can't complain too much about the later WWE games, not really having as much to do with backstage stuff. It was far less of a thing on the live shows after the Attitude Era, partly because they realized they needed to do it more sparingly to have more impact, and partly because that kind of edgy try to keep it uh, seeming real thing was hurting some of the production values. At the very least, it had to be a little awkward that a good amount of the cameras and the live audience wasn't even going to actually see it because they were fighting in the boiler room or something. <laughs> Good luck just as he hits us in the gut. Bloody hell, does that idiot even realize that if he wins, he's going to have to deal with challengers coming at all times himself? Or is he just expecting to lose and being a prick because the hardcore division is where you're allowed to be a completely unrepentant asshole and people will still cheer for you? Hell, I forget who said it, but someone once said that ECW was essentially opposite land where things that typically are seen as heelish are seen as face moves and being... And the things that are usually heroic are seen as being a jerk who's preventing people from having fun. That was certainly a lot of cheer shots for him to take without falling off his feet. And while the blood certainly shows that he took plenty of damage, I have no clue how much that damage actually measures up to. Eh, all I know is that we have the edge, despite the fact that Taka supposedly ambushed us in this locker room. And considering he said he wouldn't want to deal with challengers coming at all times, I again have to wonder why the hell he tried to challenge for this title. Part of me is actually kind of tempted to lose just to see what would happen to him afterwards. But I suppose it's more fun to fight like you want to win all the time, even if there are some matches you aren't emotionally invested in, and some that you just feel doomed going for. Eh, at least it's been very, very rare for us to get hit by both of those at the same time. Okay, no clue why we didn't just ram into those chairs there. Still, if the game's physics want to help make this a little easier on us, then who am I to complain? Oh, for God's sakes, why would the crowd be booing after a low blow in a match like this? Eh, especially when we were the ones who were ambushed. I know in live events there are some low blows that they outright cheer upon seeing, and someone landing a low blow on a guy who ambushed him in the back for a hardcore title match feels like something the audience would cheer, even if nobody would really enjoy a wrestler who just pounds his opponents in the groin to avoid having to get into an actual fight. I'm sure that would even divert back to heelish for the Twilight Zone known as hardcore matches. One. Right, two back-to-back -back that I caught on a pinfall after a suplex. This feels like as good a time as any to end the clip.